Requirements Engineering Introduction Requirements Engineering is usually the first step in any software. Many don't realize that it is also challenging, costly, and could be the riskiest step of them all. This is important to clear the common misconception that an analyst's job is just to meet with the customer over coffee, listen to her, and then write down everything in notes, and that's it. This is not true nor relevant to software engineering. The analyst's job is much more challenging and much deeper than that. We will look at the software development lifecycle from the requirements engineer's point of view. In most cases, the requirements engineer is a role and not just a job title. Actually, I do not recall meeting someone whose title is requirements engineer. They can practically be called many names like software analyst, system analyst, and process analyst. Some other indirect jobs could have the role of a requirements engineer such as business architect, project manager, process engineer, product manager, product owner, quality assurance analyst, and of course, the good old know-it-all title, consultant. According to the CWI book, there are eight subjects under software requirements. Software Requirements Fundamentals, Requirements Process Model, Requirements Elicitation, Requirements Analysis, Requirements Documentation, Requirements Validation, Practical Consideration, and Requirements Tools. In this course, I want you to imagine the requirements engineer as if he is telling you his life story. He will tell you the different meanings of software requirements. What should the requirements engineer do? What skills should he possess? What tools that he uses? What techniques or best practices that should we be familiar with? Whom should he deal with? What should the people expect from him? And what should he expect from others? What terms do the requirements engineer mostly use? And lastly, in a special considerations, we should be aware of when dealing with the software requirements engineer. Why is requirement engineering important? If we develop software without giving enough attention to the requirements, developers won't know what is considered complete. Is it good enough if the delete functionality just deletes? Does the delete functionality need to show a confirmation? Should it send an email notification? Should all users be able to perform a delete action? Without requirements, developers won't have to assume such functionalities. No one can guarantee that such assumptions are what the customer wants. But I can guarantee that there will be a lot of rework. Without requirements, testers won't know what to test. Again, testers must make assumptions and spend time defining or looking for hidden requirements themselves. This essentially adds to the overall time and cost of the testing process. Customers won't know what to expect. Software requirements establish the agreement between your team and the customer on what the application is supposed to do. Without requirements and details on how the features will work, the software users can't determine if the software will meet their needs. On the other dark side, what if we have invalid requirements? Invalid requirements can lead to a non-useful system, even if we use the state of the art software development techniques with invalid requirements, you will get an invalid product that the customer will not use. Late requirements will lead to major changes, which will lead to schedule slippage, where more time is wasted trying to merge the new changes, which will result in a higher cost. Invalid requirements can lead to extra steps to perform simple software tasks, making the system harder to use. Unnecessary requirements lead to an unnecessarily complicated, unusable system. When users feel frustrated by using the software, they will drop it and never use it again. They will never come back to you again to develop software for them. If we have valid requirements, we might have trouble understanding the requirements that we do acquire from the customer. We often record requirements in a disorganized manner. We spend far too little time verifying what we record. We allow change to control us rather than establishing mechanisms to control change. Most importantly, we fail to establish a solid foundation for the system or software that the user wants to be built. Cost of repair. Also, as a result of faults in the requirements, 
there is a high cost. Imagine if you have a fault or a bug in the requirements, and you could find that fault while you are still in the requirements phase. In that case, the cost of fixing that fault may not be very high, and the duration to fix it will be very short as well. Now, imagine if you only find that bug when delivering the software to the customer. In that case, the cost may end up being 100 to 1,000 times higher than if you find it during the requirements phase. Therefore, requirements need a very high level of effort to prevent any faults from occurring. This is why we emphasize the importance of requirements and make sure that they are correct from the beginning to avoid such problems. So, a good understanding of user requirements is crucial to the success of the software. Propagation of errors. We need to understand that a mistake during the requirements process could cause a considerable effect afterward. For instance, if the analyst brings both correct and incorrect information, the faulty requirements will lead to a faulty design. And if we add that to the expected possibility that the designers make few mistakes themselves. Now, the totality of the faulty design will lead to faulty code. Again, we can add that to what the developer might do wrong as well. This way, we will end up with software that has many faults. Those faults, A, some will be found by the testers and resolved by the developers, hopefully. B, some will be found by the testers, but the developers might not resolve them. Yes, I've seen that before. And C, some faults will never be found by the testers. Therefore, errors propagate. Errors introduced during the requirements phase, if not handled properly, will propagate into the subsequent phases, resulting in a product that is not usable and the intended use will not be met. This is the importance of making sure requirements are correct to avoid such propagation from happening from the beginning. So, answering the question, why do we need requirements engineering? The obvious answer is to know what we should build before we build it. The not so obvious answer is that we usually have trouble understanding the requirements that we acquire from the customer and failures at this stage are more costly than in any other development phase. The benefits of having solid requirements. Software requirements are critical for the successful development of all downstream activities like design, coding, maintenance, and testing. Providing a documented basis of what the software product is to do based on requirements. Providing a baseline for software capabilities. The tester will use the requirements as a reference to test the software. Providing a basis for the estimation of cost and schedule. And accordingly, it helps the project manager build the project plans, decide on the process to use, track the project, etc. Reducing the effort needed to produce software by avoiding spending effort on unnecessary requirements. Facilitating future evolution, adaptation, and migration of software items. If we want to create version 2 of the software, then the requirements document of version 1 will help us decide what features we can add to version 2. The technical writer can use the requirements to start working on the user or help manuals. This shows the importance of requirements and how important it is to put effort and concentration during the process to discover any possible mistakes as early as possible to avoid any of the problems mentioned before.